welcome to learning management system commissionerate of collegiate education vijayawada andhra pradesh myself indravati assistant professor in biotechnology kvo government college for women autonomous karnul dear learners the subject recombinant dear learners today's topic is gene transfer physical and chemical methods and in this session you will be learning about the various type of uh, physical methods that is instruments which are used in transfer of the genes and various chemicals which are used to transfer genes or clone the genes in the target cell and also the advantages and limitations of this physical and chemical methods of gene transfer dear learners let's study about the gene transfer methods used in the production of transgenic animals you know that there are two methods one is direct gene transfer and another one is indirect gene transfer so during direct gene transfer the gene the desired gene is directly transferred from source to the target organism using a, either instruments or chemicals so this method is called as direct gene transfer so directly you are transferring the desired gene from the source to the target organism in the indirect gene transfer you are taking the support of biological agents like vector and host to transfer the desired gene from the source to the target organism the direct gene delivery methods are of two types one is physical method and the second one is chemical methods in the physical method also you are seeing uh, we'll be discussing about three types biolistics electroporation and micro injection whereas in chemical methods you will be studying about lipofiction and calcium phosphate precipitation methods coming to the first physical method of gene transfer biolistics so biolistics it is a method where the genes are directly transferred into the cells using high pressure helium gas so this method was uh, first developed by professor john stanford of uh, cornell university in the year 1987 the alternate names of this method are particle bombardment method gene gun method micro projectile bombardment method and particle acceleration so this method of gene transfer is commonly employed in this monocots so this is uh, the way in which uh, the biolistic uh, uh, equipment it looks like this is the bombardment chamber which is kept in the laminar airflow cabinet in order to provide sterile conditions here is an outlet tube to create a vacuum creation so this uh, particular uh, uh, technique it employs high velocity micro projectiles or the micro particles they are uh, used to deliver foreign genes into the cells and tissues of the target organism so that is here you are uh, uh, accelerating the micro particles with high speed into the target cell these micro carriers they contain gold or tungsten particles which are of size uh, 0.6 to 1 mm in size and these particles they are coated with dna by using certain chemicals like uh, calcium chloride spermidin and polyethylene glycol so if you see the that is the uh, illustration of this uh, particular mechanism it looks like this so this is the gas acceleration tube through this tube you will be pumping a helium gas with high pressure and this is the micro carrier plate which carries the micro particles and this is the stopping screen and here is the target tissue so through this gas acceleration tube with a high pressure helium gas is pumped so it hits the micro carrier plate and it delivers this micro particles with high speed into this target tissue so that is the same thing is represented here clearly so this is the uh, plant material 
from the leaves you are taking the protoplast and this yellow color one is the gold particle or tungsten particle and this uh, particles they are coated with dna and this dna coated micro particles they are projected with high speed into the this uh, target cells that is the protoplast later these protoplast are uh, transferred into appropriate medium and you will be seeing the regeneration of uh, plantlets these plantlets they are cultured in tissue culture media and after a particular period of time they are habituated to the outside environment and complete plantlets are developed these plantlets will be having the ability to express the gene which you have inserted so in this manner the dna which is pre uh, present on these particles they would have inserted into the target uh, plant cells whenever you are projecting them with high speed the genes they may be getting inserted into the plant chromosome and the plant cells have transformed coming to the next method electroporation this electroporation it uses devices called electroporators to produce electric pulses in order to create transient pores in the trans in the plasma membrane of the target cells so when these pores are created it allows the entry of the foreign dna which is present outside so this method was first demonstrated by wong and human in the year 1982 to study the gene transfer in mouse cells the target cells which are preferred for electroporation they include bacteria protoplast immature embryos so if you see the device it will be looking like this it will be, uh, the electroporator device and uh, inside this one you will be placing the cuvettes these are the cuvettes in the cuvettes you will be loading the that is the transfection mixture the transfection mixture it contains cell suspension that the target dna and the buffer and if you keep the that is uh, this uh, cuvettes containing the transfection mixture into this uh, machine and uh, give power supply electric shock is created or electric impulse for high voltage for short time that is 1000 to 10000 volt per centimeter for few microseconds if you are supplying low voltage then it is for long time in, in milliseconds 250 to 750 volt per centimeter so the basis of this electroporation technique is the ability of the phospholipid bilayer to spontaneously assemble and reassemble after disturbance so once you create the shock first the the pores are formed and when you remove the this uh, shock then the again the plasma membrane it again reseals so this is the diagram this is the cell the yellow color one is this the cells and the outside you are having the recombinant dna molecules so once you subject it to electric shock the temporarily in the plasma membrane of the target cell pores are created and the dna molecules present outside they will be entering into the cell and it, they will be integrating into the genome target cell genome and once you are removing the electric pulse again the plasma membrane it reseals so this is the picture of electron microscope picture of the plasma membrane so this is before the pulse and uh, this is during the elect electric shock the transient pores are created over the membrane and once you remove the electric pulse again the resealing of the plasma membrane is seen okay in this manner electroporation it creates temporary pores in the plasma membrane and helps in the transfer of foreign dna inside the cell and its integration next coming to the last method of uh, physical method of gene transfer that is micro injection this technique it is widely used in mammals and it was uh, first proposed by marshall a barber in the early 19th century so generally it involves the delivery of the foreign gene in a living cell like uh, embryos or in fertilized eggs 
by taking a fine glass micro injection micro needle you will be taking in that injection uh, you will be loading the sample transfection uh, mixture it is loaded and the transfection mixture it contains the this uh, dna foreign dna insert so you will be having a holding pipette by means of this holding pipette you will be holding uh, the target cells using suction pressure so this entire assembly the micro injection assembly is viewed under a powerful microscope and in the sterile conditions you will be viewing and by holding the target cell using the micro pipette by means of suction pressure you will be holding this one and you will be injecting the dna sample into the target cell using the micro injection so the target dna it is entering into the cell and gets integrated into the cell genome so this micro injection it is most prominently used for injecting foreign genes into the embryos of mammals the coming to the next method the chemical method of gene transfer you will be learning two methods the first one is calcium phosphate precipitation method this technique was first applied by graham and van der van der erb in 1973 so in this method you will be first taking the dna the target dna or the foreign dna in the phosphate buffer solution and uh, to this solution you will be adding the calcium chloride so this forms the precipitate so you will be getting dna calcium phosphate precipitate so the precipitate the precipitate dna when you are uh, loading or uh, adding this uh, precipitate dna on this uh, cells target cells so the target cells engulf the precipitate dna by means of a process called as phagocytosis or endocytosis later the precipitate dna enters into the cell and it integrates into the cell genome in this manner by means of endocytosis uh, the dna precipitate which is present in the outside it gets uh, engulfed and integrated into the cell genome and the target gene will be integrated into the cell genome and it will be expressing so next method is uh, lipofiction here you will be using artificial phosphid phospholipid molecules in the form of vesicles so these vesicles pericle vesicles they are called as liposomes in that vesicles you will be loading our foreign genes so here the dna is encapsulated in these phospholipid vesicles these are called as liposomes the dna encapsulated in the phospholipid vesicles they are called as liposomes and these lipid vesicles when you are fusing with the cell membrane of the target cell the foreign gene which is present in the liposome it gets uh, into the cell by endocytosis and it gets integrated into the cell genome so the most uh, commonly used liposomes they are uh, gene transfer they are made up of cationic phospholipids because the dna is anionic you will be preferring cationic phospholipids to prepare the liposomes and uh, this method is generally used to transfect large size uh, dna fragment if you want to insert large size uh, foreign dna into the target cells then you will be employing this lipofiction method so this is the liposome this is the made up of a phospholipid bilayered vesicle in this uh, vesicle you will be uh, taking this uh, that is the dna is encapsulated in this vesicle and these vesicles the liposomes when you are uh, treating it with the target cells it will be entering into the cell by means of endocytosis and then later it enters into the cell cytoplasm and integrates into the cell genome and the transgene will be showing its expression this is the second method of uh, chemical gene transfer 
at the end let's have a recap of what we have covered in the previous slides so in the we have learned about the direct method of gene transfer that is uh, you are transferring directly the desired gene from the source to the target organism by using physical and chemical means in the physical methods uh, you have used different instruments like gene gun micro needles and electroporators to transfer the target gene in that also gene gun is mostly used for plants whereas uh, micro needles and um, that is micro injection and electroporators they are used for transformation in uh, plant protoplast and in all the animal cells in the chemical methods you are seen the usage of chemicals like calcium phosphate and ca cationic lipids for gene transfer it is this method of gene transfer is used for uh, transformation in plant protoplast and in uh, this uh, embryos uh, or embryonic stem cells in case of the animals and uh, coming to the advantages these are uh, uh, used widely to a variety of cells and uh, the methods are cost effective whereas the limitations the transformation frequency is very low and also a lot of technical skill that is the technical oriented persons they should be involved in operating the procedure hope you enjoy learning this session last but not the least i profusely thank commissariat of collegiate education for providing this lms platform to reach a large number of enthusiastic learners like you thank you thank you one and all